Page 160, Song of Joy. That's not really the name of the piece, but it's what this author of this book has decided to call it. It's a very famous melody from a Beethoven symphony. It says it's a theme from symphony number nine. Remember, a theme is just another word for melody, except a theme could be just part of a melody. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. Is it a theme is just a melody. This melody is in the fourth movement of that symphony. I encourage you to go listen to it. Just listen to the whole symphony, though. Considering Beethoven was deaf as a doorknob when he wrote it, I think it's quite amazing. Couldn't hear a thing, but he wrote it. It was all in his head. So I'm assuming we're going to get D major for a while, so we're going to see two stripes in the key signature for a while. I go through the system that I use or the process I use for learning a piece of music because it seems to work no matter how hard the music gets, I can use the same process. It, I can rely on it. First thing is I, I look it over. I want an idea of about how long it is. What am I getting into? I see it's about a page and a half long of music. Now there are repeat signs that'll make the piece longer than one and a half pages but I only have about one and a half pages of music to learn, and that's what I'm after. The clef signs are treble and bass, at least to start. I, I do kind of scan through, are the clef signs changing anywhere? It's just kind of a quick, I don't have to, but they're not in this. They're gonna stay treble and bass all the way through. The key signature is two sharps. That's the key of D major. So go ahead and be doing the scale for D major, and go ahead and do the scale, or the arpeggio for D major. One octave is fine. Just just learn it. Don't push it. You don't spend a lot of times on scales and arpeggios. You spend a little time on them, but it's important to do it regularly. That's what counts. I got videos on it. You can do that too. Wouldn't hurt to go ahead and do the scale and arpeggio for B minor also, because B minor, the key of B minor, has two sharps. I'm sure the book will present it eventually. And 4-4 four, four time signature. I see a bunch of quarter notes and Half notes and dotted rhythms and eighth notes, oh, we can do this. Let's take it one hand at a time, right hand. The right hand doesn't actually come in until measure 14. And it's third finger here, that puts the hand here. And until the hand moves, you don't need any other finger numbers, you just need to be reading the notes. You get, does it sound familiar? Yeah. Let's go down to measure 18. Second inning is one and two. Now they want to go here. If you don't want to be up in here, you can you can do this. On measure 18 up in here. Now all I'm going to do is just use this as a pivot. I'm going to come across two and three. And I'm going to keep my thumb on here. I'm, this is a little weird because when I get to the third beat there, the D and the F sharp, I'm still going to use thumb here. this position really. here I got the thumb on the D and I'm staying here all the way until measure 22 this position and then I can come back during the rest and up now if you don't mind being up in here you can go ahead and use the fingering in the book you just gotta come down thumb again You can't connect it because you're using the thumb for both. If you use this other finger, you can connect everything. Here. I can connect it all. And this fingering will come in handy eventually. This is a more advanced fingering, but you're not exactly in real beginner's music. You're starting to get into early intermediate music here. So it's, we need to be thinking about other fingerings and so forth. Left hand, well, it starts out down here. And you don't need any other fingering until the left hand moves, which I think is around measure nine or so. We'll get there. So here, just quarter notes. And I trust you know the names of these notes in this music. If you don't, do the play and say it drill. Drill yourself on the names of the notes. Measure eight, you're here. Bring the thumb down. The feeling is similar to a scale. I mean, that this is isn't the fingering for this scale, but the idea of bringing the thumb down under black key is similar to a scale. So, the thumb. This sets us up for the next measure. And then, they want you to come up here. Here. 
if your head's big enough, you can use second finger on the F sharp. That is an A, by the way. Three ledger lines below bass clef. Remember ledger lines? Uh -huh. Well, two ledger lines is a C. Just memorize that one. That's important. Remember, C's are symmetrical. Two ledger lines below bass clef is a C. Two ledger lines above treble clef is a C. Middle C is in the middle of the grand staff. It's symmetrical. So this is three ledger lines, which would be one more down here. It's an A. So here or here, whichever one, I don't care. Because in the next measure, you get the F sharp again. And that way you can change hand positions on the repeated note. Or whichever. And we're back to what we were doing. Now, when you get to measure 13, then you got to lift up and come up here. Here, to this position. You just come up, it's an octave up. To help you do that if you want, you don't want to use little finger to little finger. That's what the book is saying. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. You can do that. However, if you would rather, you can use a different finger for the first note. But I need thumb on the A for the second note. So which finger I'm using for the first note? Well, it would be a three or a two, depending on the... If I use a three, then I'm here. The idea with this is I'm not moving the hand as far. If I got here, the hand is here, I gotta go to here, all the way to here. If I use third finger, my hand is here, which is closer to that. I'm not moving as far. And sometimes in piano that helps. So if I can do three and then five, I just use the three to get me into position. Here at the eighth notes, I'm just rotating. I'm walking on the piano here between finger to finger. I'm exaggerating it so you can see it better. The motion is actually a very little one. Okay, measure 18, you're down here, you got the beat rest to come down. I would recommend if you can use two and three on the half note. The idea is I take all those notes together, measures 18 and 19 in the left hand. It's here, here, and measure 19 is here. That. That is a D major chord in second inversion because the D's on the, the A's on the bottom, right? And I'm doubling the A up here because really it's this. But that's the fingering for it, and you'll run across this in music, so I would prefer to finger it this way. That way I can connect all the notes with the fingers here. So measures 18 and 19, here, and then here. Rather than this, I need this. This is rather awkward. I don't recommend it, if you can help it. So I'm going to do a 2, 3, and then a 1. Measure 21, cross over. Rest, and then come back to where you were. Last measure. Figure it one, two if you want. If you don't want to be up in here, do a two, three again, like you did on measure 18. It doesn't matter. Either one will do it. So once I have an idea what the hands are doing individually, then I attempt to put them together, and I'll probably hesitate. I don't care. That's fine. Measure what? 14 when they start here. Anyway, go through and put the hands together, and then go back through slowly and carefully and get rid of the hesitations. Work them out. Never let a hesitation stick around. Get rid of it. Once I have that, I'll think about the articulation. And here, this is very connected, very smooth. You can lift up between the phrases, and that's usually where the half notes are, just like taking a breath. They give you accents occasionally, and those accents are important in this. Well, they're always important, but here, like measure nine. Well, we'll start with measure eight here. And that sharp boom. It's a syncopated note because we're expecting. That's what we're expecting to hear. But Beethoven intentionally syncopated the note. And it's normal when you syncopate a note that you accent it. That's part of interpreting the note. Here he's telling us to. So just play a little louder. 
And you'll get that syncopated note in other places in the same thing. When it, when it's you're playing it quick, you'll get it accented. For instance, measure 22 here. That, it's the same thing we just did, except now the right hand gets it. It's accented. Play it a little louder. Now, I already told you to connect it. I was very connected. Look at the beginning underneath the staff. You see the word legato. They're telling you to connect. That's the same as the big long slurs to connect it. Legato means connect the notes. That's what we're doing. There's no real staccatos in here at all. You're, just, you're lifting up for the phrases. Otherwise, you're pretty much connecting everything. Then the dynamics. What starts out P, piano. With the, it says, imagine the basses, string basses with their bows playing this. So it's very soft. And in major nine, you get a crescendo. How loud you get? It doesn't say. How long the crescendo lasts? It doesn't say. You feel it. Experiment. You're soft, a major nine, you're starting soft. Now you're louder, probably up to about a moderately soft or so. That makes the accent and note a little louder than that. And then now we're moderately soft. Now we're going back, going back down to soft. Measure 14, moderately loud, that's the melody, and that's the right hand. These are soft. Uh, measure what? 19, you're sort of soft in the melody. Left hand's very soft. And measure 21, crescendo back up, you know you're going to go up to loud. That makes the accent and note a very loud note for one note, and then we're loud. So again, measure 21, we're moderately soft. Start that measure moderately soft, and you're gradually going to go up to loud. Watch the rhythm there. It's getting a little tricky. Measure 22. One, two, three, four, one, and two. Just work that out so that each beat is there. in the melody. You're staying loud. Keep the left hand out in the background. After that I think about the speed. This isn't really fast, but it's it don't drag it. Two, one, two, three, four, one. To me that's not Allegro at all. Allegro is much quicker than that. It's a felt. Listen to the orchestra play it. Just be careful there. You need to listen to more than one orchestra do it, though, because different orchestra conductors will interpret it differently. They'll take it at different speeds. That's a kind of important you understand. There isn't a speed. It's whatever, what feels about right. Now, they've added pedal, and we can use pedal on some of it. We don't need pedal on all of it, although it'd be nice to have the overtones. However, they're not, so we'll just first do the pedal as the way they're suggesting it. And it's going to be like pedal, or overlapping. It starts, I think, on measure 11 is the first one. You, you play it after you play the ha half note and lift it up after you play the notes in the next measure. I'm guessing they're telling you pedal there so you, it'll help you move your hand and connect the notes. There's nothing wrong with having, you're going to lift up for the phrase anyway. You can have a little silence there, so you really don't need pedal on that measure, especially if you'll... You can have a little silence there. It's okay. Just a little, like taking a breath, in which case you don't need pedal. Yet. So I'm going to leave pedal out on that measure. However, when I get to measure 19, we're going to connect all this together. And with their fingering they give you, you can't connect it. With the fingers, you need the pedal. Well, if you use the fingering I told you, you could connect it. Well, go ahead and use the pedal because it has the overtones. It's a nice contrast here. Change it just like they're doing it and do it after after you play the notes, so the pedal lags behind, it starts on measure 18. But again, if you do the fingering like I tell you to, you don't need. Yeah, and then at the end, last measure, it's 
for the overtones there. It gives a little color at the end. Remember when you use pedal, you use it for different reasons. Use it for some reason. Don't just use it because the music says to. Uh, try and understand what it's doing. And here, I think in this piece, the main reason they're using pedal is to help you connect the notes because with the fingering they're giving you, you can't. If you change it to the fingering I gave you, you can for the most part. Yeah. But it doesn't hurt. It's nice to have the overtones. It'd be nice to have the overtones throughout, but they don't. Okay. Now the repeat signs, just to make sure you understand them. Measures four and five, you have endings. First ending, second. Measure four has a repeat sign, sends you back to the beginning. I'm surprised they didn't put in a reverse repeat sign at the beginning, because they've been doing it before. You never need a reverse repeat sign at the beginning of a piece, as far as I'm concerned, because the repeat sign means go back to the beginning unless there's a reverse repeat sign. So you go back and you play the first line again. Now you're going to skip the first ending the second time. You only do an ending once. You do it for the whatever number's in it. If it had more than one number in it, then you would do it for each number. And sometimes endings do. They share the same endings. Then on measure 17, you have first ending again with a repeat sign. But now you get a reverse repeat sign on measure 14. So you only going to go back to there and repeat all that, and then skip the first ending the second time and go on through. So it's just a, about a line or so, two lines longer than it looks. Remember the natural accents? One, two, three, four. One, two. Feel these as a, exaggerate them if you need to, but feel them. the pedal exactly as they say to and if I played this again I'd pedal it differently. I keep experimenting so don't copy me. You get into it and feel the music yourself here. Let's play this together slowly and check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do the louds and softs and I'm not going to do the pedaling. You hear everything better without the pedal and that's all we're doing is checking notes and rhythms. We will do the repeats and I'll give us four counts. One, two, Ready, go. Mm -hmm. 